What's next for Starfield? Starfield has been out for a couple months now, and everyone's treating it like it's the next Woody. But with the release of update 1947, I think Bethesda has made the future of Starfield much clearer. The question is, will 2024 make or break Starfield? Let's dive into it. There's a lot to unpack with what we can expect from Bethesda, but let's start with something more concrete. Last month, Bethesda released this roadmap, if you can call it that, which promises these six things. We know Bethesda plans to update the game every six weeks, which means we should expect eight updates throughout 2024. Of course, one of those updates is probably already out by now, so let's just say there are seven updates left this year. So let's start with Creations. They say they're planning on releasing it in early 2024. I thought it was going to be this update, but of course that's not happening. That means we should expect the creation kit to release in mid-March. It would still be considered early 2024, more on the late end, but still within the first quarter. To put that into perspective, Fallout 4's creation kit came out 5 months after the game's release. For Starfield, a March release would put it over 6 months, which isn't unreasonable. So I'm very confident that's coming out in March. I wonder how it's gonna launch in the Steam beta, if at all, given it's a separate piece of software. When they did it with Fallout 4, they had their own launcher, so they launched it through there. But that was prior to Microsoft acquiring Bethesda, which eventually led them to put it out to pasture. But mods aren't gonna save this game, and it would be foolish for Bethesda to rely on them. So with the second update nailed down, let's look at update 3, projected to release around early May. This would be the earliest possible release date for the Shattered Space expansion. Of course, they are not going to release Creations and Shattered Space at the same time. That would be utterly stupid. A May release date would be about 8 months since Starfield's release. For perspective, Far Harbor, the first story expansion, coincidentally was also released in May, 6 months after Fallout 4, and Dawnguard came out 7 months after Skyrim. So nothing out of the ordinary. But that doesn't mean that'll happen. Instead, Update 3 could be a DLC. But what kind of DLC? Perhaps the new ways to travel? Maybe an expanded ship customization DLC? The reason I say that is because I don't want to say that's too soon. But I have a feeling Bethesda would want to release content akin to something as big as Automatron or Wasteland Workshop just because it's easier to make. Something to whet our appetite before Shattered Space is released. Not to mention that any new features from Update 3 would already be integrated into that expansion. In that case, the new expansion could come out in Update 4, which is mid-June. You know what else is happening mid-June? Game announcement season, Summer Games Fest, Xbox Showcase. So they'll release the trailer around end of May, early June, which would coincide with the Steam beta release. Then they would use the Xbox Showcase to build more hype for the new expansion when it releases later that week or next week. But again, the only DLC that's been announced is the expansion. Unlike with Fallout 4, where they didn't announce post-release content until 4 months after the game came out and has a season pass. So if there's one thing I know, if it ain't coming out in May, we'll at least hear more about it in June. I'm confident that the release of Shattered Space will coincide with either Update 3 or 4, although not as confident as I am with Creations. As for the other DLC, the release date is pure speculation. Speaking of DLCs, what would be a new way to travel? I don't believe they're gonna let us fly on planets anytime soon. Of course, many people suggested ground vehicles, which seems to be the most likely. But just for fun, what would be another new way to travel? Some suggested mechs. And to that, I say, very unlikely. And I'll discuss more about that later. Maybe your AI friends can pilot ships. I mean, Sam has the piloting skill after all. Maybe they'll remove the loading screens. I highly doubt it though. Todd Howard did talk about a limited fuel mechanic that they removed in a 2022 interview, where you actually have limited fuel that doesn't auto-refuel after traveling, and you have to actually plan your trips. That may be considered a new way of traveling if they decide to add it back. Then there's ship customization. According to the website, they mention new ship decorations, new ship building options, and more. I think a lot of people were disappointed about the inability to customize and decorate your ship's interior. I believe there's a mod that treats your ship as an outpost so you can put stuff inside. I have a feeling that Bethesda's gonna do something similar to that. And I'm sure Bethesda's well aware of the vitriol against ladders. So we're probably gonna see stairs and maybe even elevators. Additionally, we might be seeing a new ship manufacturer or manufacturers, which also means a new location. Perhaps there'll be a new questline to help out a budding entrepreneur looking to get into the shipbuilding business named, I don't know, Milan Usk. What about Shattered Space? 
Bethesda has been very tight-lipped about their first story expansion, but I think the name provides us some clues. There are various theories floating around. Some suggest it has something to do with a new universe, where the colony war is still happening. Spoiler warning for those who haven't played it, but during the World's Apart mission, the other Barrett mentions that the war is still ongoing in his universe, lending some credence to the idea. Going into a universe where there's still the colony war would radically change the main quests and faction quest lines as well, along with refreshing the entire universe. The only problem is that there has to be some way to guarantee that universe when going to New Game Plus. Right now you can only get New Game Plus variations randomly. My theory is a lot safer and it goes like this. When Bethesda titles their expansions for their games, it's usually named after a faction or a location with at least one exception. Judging by the name, Shattered Space, it sounds more like a location than a faction, and it suggests there's some cataclysmic event that gave this location the nickname Shattered Space. It could be a cluster of systems, with some of them having some serious shit, like level 100 plus systems akin to endgame content you would see in MMO games. Whatever the case, Shattered Space has to be good, like without a doubt. Of course, Bethesda wants to make the best expansion they can make, and they're capable of doing that. The most recent example, again, was Fallout Far Harbor. A lot of people loved it, with many saying that the expansion was better than the main game. However, the landscape has completely changed. Games like Cyberpunk and Baldur's Gate 3 are out, and it doesn't feel like good will be good enough. Bethesda's gonna have to actually make something interesting for once. Will they do it? Time will tell. As for what's beyond update 4, that's where my crystal ball gets blurry. Literally anything could be in the last 4 updates in the second half of the year. Again, it could be the previously mentioned DLCs. No doubt there will be new locations, but those can be added in any updates. Hopefully they'll make their own points of interest and not heavily rely on modders making it for them. Whether or not we'll have to pay for them? That's actually a good question. I have a feeling that at least some of them will be paid. City maps and new gameplay options can also be added in any update. I'm pretty sure they're gonna add a survival mode where you have to manage your hunger and thirst and perhaps a hardcore mode where you can't save and or there's permadeaths. They did mention that the game was actually going to be a lot harder before they nerfed the hell out of it, so they may just unnerf it. This image that was allegedly from the game's files shows how the game could have been more difficult. To the right, you'll see that the player actually has limited fuel for traveling. Heck, even traveling to different planets in the same system consumes quite a bit of fuel. Above that is how long it would take which looks like might be an in-game time and not actual time. Below are various hazards in the system. I don't know what catastrophic stop means. Does that mean your ship will blow up if it hits a micrometeoroid? And the UI looks a lot more interesting. You get a list of planets and systems to choose from, and economies? There were gonna be different economies in the game? But again, I just want to point out that this was only concept art and wasn't implemented in code, and the source of the image is not clear, so it should be taken with a grain of salt. What's also interesting is what they didn't say. If you look at their end of year update, they made no mention of Outpost. Fallout 4 had 3 building focused add-on packs, but no mention of it in Starfield. Is it an oversight? Or did they feel like they did enough and don't need to make more content for it? I don't know, but it'd be cool to build your own space station, just saying. Not to mention there's a lot of Outpost mods on Nexus. Beyond that, no doubt, Shattered Space won't be the only expansion not just because of its success, but because of the pre-release marketing. When it's his first story expansion, it kind of implies it's the first of a couple, or maybe many expansions. You know, it's like World Wars. You couldn't just have the first World War, you gotta have the second. So yeah, let's hope we get more than two. Expansions, not World Wars. I prefer Fallout to be a work of fiction, not a documentary. As for what any future expansions might be about, could be anything. I'm pretty sure House Varun are going to get their day in the sun. They've been referenced heavily in the lore, but their presence has been rather anemic in game. Maybe we'll see the Great Serpent. I mean, we gotta see it, right? We can't talk about it that much and not show it. It's also possible that's what Shattered Space is gonna be about. Maybe a second Serpent's Crusade. Or Varun Civil War, who knows? A universe where the Colony War is still ongoing, like I mentioned earlier? That would be the only way for them to add playable mechs into the game. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. Maybe intelligent alien races. Howard did mention that in a 2021 interview, although looking back, I think he might be referencing the Starborn, because they're technically aliens, but also not really. I believe the earliest possible release window for the second expansion will be late 2024. If not, then definitely next year. You know what's funny? 
Looking back at this comment by Todd Howard, I don't think they expected people to hate this game so much, despite the fact that it's not actually a bad game. And it's all in less than 6 months, and the game's already getting blasted in the reviews, and it's seeing a dwindling player count. So yeah, what does Starfield look like in 6 months? Pretty bad. If you made it this far into video, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe and ring that bell. Let me know in the comments below what you think of all this. I believe Starfield is too important for not just Bethesda, but Microsoft as well. I mean 13 million players sounds great, but how many of that are from Game Pass? Starfield is supposed to be Game Pass's magnum opus, and for a while it was, but clearly not anymore. Microsoft wants this game to continue driving Game Pass sales, and a great expansion would be a way to do that. Not to mention, this is Todd Howard's dream game. He ain't gonna give up on it, and I don't think this is how he wants people to think of his game at the end of the day. Especially when Howard revealed that 250 people, which is over half of the studio, were still working on Starfield post-launch. Although who knows how many are still there after the Xbox layoffs. As long as Bethesda steers Starfield in the right direction, I think it'll be fine. Many games before it have turned it around and became great, like Cyberpunk and No Man's Sky. But this could take a couple years. Whether Bethesda will listen to the players, or remain stubborn and bitch and whine about it on X, I think 2024 will be a pivotal moment for that. As I was making this video, news came out that Starfield might be coming to the PS5. Now I don't think that changes a lot in terms of the future of Starfield, but I think it reinforces that Shattered Space has to be great. Because how many units are they gonna sell on PS5 with an okay expansion. I do have a lot of interesting thoughts about this, but I'll leave that for a future video which should be coming very soon, so stay tuned. In the meantime, if you want to check out what's in the newest update for Starfield, then I highly recommend you watch this video right here.